you might as well praise him. Because it's already done. You might as well give him the glory. Because it's already done. Yes. Yes. Yes, God. It's already done. Look for your healing. Look for your door to be open. Look for breakthrough to happen. Because it's already, I need you to say that one more time. It's already done. Come on, continue to put your hands together for Jesus. Come on and continue to put your hands together for him. Come on, make some noise in here. Hallelujah. We come to celebrate the king on today. Hallelujah. Put your hands together like this with us. Come on, everyone, clap, clap. Let's celebrate our king. He's the ruler of everything let's lift his name on high come on zion we praise our king let's celebrate he's the jeweler of everything let's lift his name on high we praise our king
Celebrate Holy Week with Bishop R.C. Smith, M.D. and the Apostolic Faith Church family beginning on Palm Sunday, March 24th at 10 a.m. for a special service featuring our youth ministries. Come nail your prayers to the cross in our chapel from 8 a.m. until 8 p.m. Monday through Friday. If you cannot be in person, please send in your prayer request by clicking the link at afcchicago.org slash holy week. Join us for a special time of teaching as we explore the life of Jesus. And you don't want to miss the life-changing experience of foot washing with your brothers and sisters on Wednesday, March 27th at 7 p.m. We will hear the last seven words of Christ and share in Holy Communion on Good Friday, March 29th at noon in our sanctuary. And we invite everyone to meet us at St. Sabina at 7 p.m. on Good Friday as Bishop Smith joins their special service at 1210 West 78th Place in Chicago. Be sure to bring someone with you to Resurrection Sunday, March 31st at 10 a.m. as our creative arts ministries help us celebrate Easter along with a special word from Bishop R.C. Smith, M.D. Get all the information and follow along online at afcchicago.org slash Holy Week. Comes with the promise. 
signs of the resurrected King. Blue is for baptism, claim of new life, conquering sin with all of its strife. W is for worship, and worthy is he of praise, adoration, <coughs> submission, and glee. Finish the story with any sweet taste, filling God's love and holy embrace. A perfect God demands a perfect justice. He cannot let us get away with sin. We use God's gift of free will to trespass. So heaven's gates were closed and we couldn't get in. Yes. Our sins required blood, a sacrifice, to atone for all the wrongs we had done. Because God loves us, so he said, I will send my son. The omelish lamb, the perfect sacrifice. So that we could be with him in paradise. Wow. On Easter morning, he arose. He vanished from the tomb, his empty grave. His resurrection means eternal life for us. the ones he came to earth to save. Because of him, this is our story. We will be with him in glory. Come on, you do better than that. Give the Lord great praise. Somebody said that our young people represent 100% of our future, and without them, we have no future. Give the Lord praise for them and their commitment. Wow. I, I know I'm repetitive, but I, I can remember most of the parts that I was given uh, as a young person. Uh, during these seasons, we, we have cut off and, and, and shortened what we expect of our young people. That's, that's a mistake. We have cut off and shortened what we expect of our young people, and that is a mistake. We have shortened and cut off what we expect of our young people, and that is a terrible mistake. They're not just saying parts. They're being taught truths. Their spirits are incorporating messages. They are learning without us understanding that that's what God has always intended. Give God praise for our teachers. Yeah. Oh, give the Lord great praise for them. Welcome again to uh, this uh, uh, Sunday we call Palm Sunday. Uh, welcome again to... Uh, Somebody said, Dr. Smith, you, you, you always talk about every season and you tell about how important it is. Well, I can say this without reservation. In, in my own personal life, in my own personal spirit, uh, there, there is no week. There is no week like this week. There is no time of reflection like this time. There is no... love that's shared like what he shared the last week of his life. The entrance into Jerusalem from, from Bethany is significant. It was from Bethany that he raised Lazarus from the dead. The nature of his opposition turned when he allowed his friend to rise. And from that moment, 
Jesus was totally immersed in his mission. Brothers and sisters, the greatness of the Christian church is that God put on flesh, mm, dwelt among us. We beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Every day of that last week of his life, the Bible says he came from God, that he was going back to God. And so he knew everything. He, he, he was human and yet he was divine. He, 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 he knew who he had chosen on Wednesday of this week. We will talk about those he had chosen. And we will depict something that I think the Christian church has often forgotten. That on that last week, as an example to all of us, he washed the disciples' feet. Jesus the Christ, the great bishop of our souls, the very God, the very God, the one who spoke a word and the worlds came into existence. He took off his regalia of his idol garments and he Imagine being in that upper room. Can, can you imagine knowing that he had chosen 12? Look what he's, he says to them, I've chosen all of you. And this is for all of us apostolic Pentecostals who are so sure about everything. I've chosen all of you, but one of you is a demon. It's not to challenge your spirituality. It's to tell you that if you're not humble, you are dangerous. If you think you have it made, you are dangerous. He washed the feet of Judas the same way he washed the feet of Cephas. He washed the feet of Judas the same way he washed the feet of John, the beloved. He washed their feet. And he said to them, do you know what I've just done to you? You call me master, you call me Lord, and I am that. If I, your master and Lord, have washed your feet, how do you get off on not washing each other's feet? It wasn't the act. It's the relationship. This week should be for all of us something that we commit ourselves deeper in sacrifice. Y'all know I have this thing about people's titles. I'm tired. I just got back from the Bishop Board meeting. I'm tired of titles. I am tired of titles. I resent all of them, even my own, because we think that what we're called makes us something. It's not what you're called. It's what you do. It's your life. It's not your talk. To say you are a bishop means nothing to me. If you're not doing the things that bishops do, to say you are a Christian means nothing to me. If you're not committed to doing what Christians do, this world's in trouble and it needs salt and it needs light. Yeah, that means you and I, all of us, all those that are watching, by the way, I, I, I got the message from W Y. Uh, JYS and on Pastor's Day, so many of you alluded to the fact how you follow us. I don't take that for granted, neither does my wife. But I'm saying to all of us that we need to be much more circumspect this week. You need to walk with us in this journey with our Lord from Bethany to Jerusalem to the upper room to the cross and beyond. If you look forward to celebrating we call Easter Sunday, then walk with him at Gethsemane where he threw himself to the ground. He was so depressed and he pleaded in prayer that we cannot comprehend. Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not what I want, but what you want. 
So walk with me this week. Forgive easily. I'm going to say it to all of us. Forgive easily. Do it quickly. You have no right to hold your anger because you were done wrong. No one was done more wrong than him. And yet he opened not his mouth. He didn't. I know I'm not the preacher, but I am the preacher. I'm the pastor. He opened not his mouth. He did not regard who he was as being important. He regarded what he came to do. We must not besmirch that by living lives of secular Christians. We must love the Lord our God. We must love one another. This week is important. Go to the website. I'm going to stop. Go to the website. Check it out. We'll be here. It says Monday through Thursday it will be open for prayer. That's not quite true. Monday through Friday we'll be open for prayer at 8 o'clock. Come and pray if you can. Today we put the cross up in the chapel. Give the Lord praise. Should have had them had a picture of it. Yeah. The cross is up. Yeah, turn your say, say neighbor. The cross is up. Give the Lord praise for the cross. We have taken prayer requests and we're beginning to do that by electronics. We will take everyone and we will write out their request and we will nail it to the cross. And every day we'll be praying for at the cross. There will be special times when ministers will be here to lead you in prayer. If you go to the website, you'll check that out uh, with us. Again, on, on Wednesday, we will be sharing together in the sanctuary briefly some teachings about, I've already taught half of it, about foot washing, not the act, but the principle. And then we will go to the chapel and we'll go to the fellowship hall and we will actually wash each other's feet. I want you to do that with us. I want you to do that with us. On Friday, we'll gather together and we'll hear the seven last sayings of Jesus. Yeah, I get real emotional. I, doesn't bother me because people don't like it. I wonder you've gotten so cold about him. You have no passion for him anymore. You don't love him enough. Hmm. You must love the Lord thy God. You don't depress the Lord because you come on Sunday morning. Big deal. I'm blessed to be in this service today. I'm blessed to be here. Come on Friday. We will, we will share in communion. We'll share in kononia, the fellowship of relationship. We will share his broken body and, and his shed blood. And we'll remember Calvary. We'll remember the cross. I, I know that we had to cut out, I think, some of the depiction of it because our young people said, that they didn't want to see Jesus being beaten. I, I, I can relate to that, but I don't think it's always a bad thing. They watch everything else on TV and on the internet. Yeah, I know. See, I, I'm weird. I, I admit it. I'm weird. If you want to come, I'm a weird pastor. When I stop being weird, I'm going to stop being effective. I do not fit in. I'm not trying to. I want to, to love him and teach you how to love him and so we'll talk about, we'll see depicted the passion of Jesus Christ, the test he had to go through, and we will walk together on Friday. And then, of course, on Sunday, we will come together, uh, invite your family and friends and be a part. It's taking a lot of time, but I, I don't apologize. I, I do not apologize. I, I am not upset about it at all. I don't want to fail the Lord by being afraid to share it from my heart. Last Sunday uh, was one of the most momentous Sundays that Sister Smith and I shared together because of the love that you showed to us. Give yourselves a hand. Yeah, you, yeah. Come on, come on. Again, we, 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 we read every note you wrote and sent in. Everything in those envelopes that you said, we sit down, we read every single one of them. Don't think we don't. 
we do that because they are precious to us. Some of you just, uh, you're overwhelmed not in, the, in what you gave, but, but the way you gave it and how you shared it. We don't take those things for granted. 44 years uh, seems like a long time, but it's been uh, a great marathon relationship that we share with this church. Yeah. When it comes to Apostolic Faith Church, I am very prejudiced. I admit it. I admit it. This church is important to, to us in ways you cannot understand, and we don't apologize about it. The people that God has allowed us to pastor, to us, all of them are precious to us. One more time, give God praise for you. And yes, the, the, the gifts are still coming and all those things. We do appreciate those things, but we value most of all uh, what you do for us, and, and we thank and praise the Lord for that relationship. Pray for us as we move forward uh, in the whole issue of leadership in this church. So we're trying to understand what God is saying. I know you have questions about a number of things, and you will hear what you need to hear at the appropriate time. We're not trying to hide anything. But I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to be a godly leader as I understand it. Uh, okay. Certain things that people demand of us and demand of me, I will say this to all of you. On some things, you must trust my judgment. Amen. I am not a novice in the Lord. I do not do things in a capricious manner ever. On some things, you will not know all the details. You have to make a decision whether not you trust me and my judgment. Because I commit myself to the Lord and to you. And I walk circumspectly. I don't walk by people's expectations. I don't do what they think I ought to do. I'm not, if you tell me what I ought to do, I'm probably resent you anyway. I pray. Yeah, I pray. I seek the Lord and I seek others' counsel. So let me ha handle the matters of this church. I thank and praise God for our board who has confidence in what I'm doing. They know the details. And we all will know what we need to know very shortly, but we need to walk circumspectively. I'm very conscious about people and their lives and how I'm involved in their life. And so again, I need your prayers. We need your prayers uh, as we move forward. One more time, give the Lord praise. I'm, I'm done with my pastoral remarks. I want to welcome again, and, and again, every Sunday we do this, we welcome those who are, have joined us by way of technology. Uh, again, because of last Sunday, uh, some of these I had forgotten about, you know, the various platforms that we're on. We got response from all those platforms and people individually, uh, even from WJYS, I kind of forgot about, we got notes. We watch you on WJYS, we do A, B, and C. Uh, we watch you again on the streaming networks. But can you help me to welcome at least 43 different countries and uh, people from every state of the union? Turn this camera and give God praise for our friends that join us. Come on, make some noise. Come on, give the Lord great praise for them. Hey, we welcome you in Jesus' name. Thank you for who you are and where you are. It is our endeavor to know you better and to know many of you personally uh, as we walk this walk of Christ. Uh, we look forward to seeing you this week during Holy Week and all those announcements that we talked about. You are welcome to join us. In the future, we plan to do a better job uh, in Holy Week by allowing those who are not with us but are remote physically but are close to us spiritually, we're going to find innovative ways to include you uh, in the foot washing, in the Lord's Supper, and all those things. But for today, we welcome you one more time in Jesus' name. Give the Lord praise for all of our guests and friends. Uh, today, I also want to uh, uh, just have uh, come to greet you very briefly. Uh, he's not the preacher. He's here just to thank you. We, you know we have missions uh, in multiple countries and uh, almost every continent that we uh, support every single month. We're having some issues right now with India where the laws of that country have changed, where it has become difficult for us to support uh, the school that we support there and other places, but we're still doing that. We're finding ways around it. Uh, the Ukraine has become something uh, of a nightmare for us in this country because it's distant. But I guarantee you that the work of Christ is continuing in the Ukraine. One of the reasons it's continuing, again, uh, is because of somebody that we have met, you have met, and he's here just to greet us. Uh, Pastor Alex, come, come up and join us here in Jesus' name. Give the Lord praise as he comes. 
Come on, give the Lord real praise. I, I know that he is here, but uh, today he's going uh, back to Europe and then back to the Ukraine. Uh, his family uh, is safe, but he is here. He also brought books. You may have noticed that they didn't put out there yet, there'll be a, a book table. Uh, when you leave the sanctuary, I want you to, how many books did you bring? 100. 100. I want you to buy all his books. Yeah. I don't, I don't want any books to be left. They're, I think they're $20, $20 20 American dollars. Yeah, 20 American dollars. Yeah, American dollars. Uh, but he just wants to greet you. He wanted to thank you. Uh, but uh, we pray for him every day. Uh, we believe God with him and for his wife and family. But welcome to the pulpit one more time, Pastor Alex in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord and greetings from Ukraine. It is such a great joy for me to be with you this uh, Palm Sunday, and uh, I'm just rejoicing. My heart is rejoicing that this same gospel of the kingdom is being preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, including country of Ukraine. Even these difficult uh, nightmare days of the war in our country. You know, uh, there are many people who uh, were asking me on this trip, what is the ministry? What do you do there these days of two, two years, two difficult, scary uh, days, um, years of the war in your country? Yeah. You know, Proverbs 24, verse 11, this is one of my favorite scriptures for this particular time, for such a time as this. It says, uh, rescue those being led away to death. Hold back those staggering towards slaughter. You know, miraculously, two years ago, when the war just hit the country, the, war, the God called me back into Ukraine, because at that time I was in Europe. He called me to go back to start this ministry. We call this Share Your Bread with Hungry One. And till this present day, because of your support, because of your prayers, we are able to run this ministry, and what this ministry does, we're providing food, clothes, medication, kids' nutrition, diapers, hygiene products, hot meals in the center of our city several days a week, uh, coal and firewood during the cold winter days for elderly people and for moms with kids. Most importantly, we deliver message of love. We deliver a message about Jesus. This same gospel is being preached in the war-torn country of Ukraine for internally displaced people from the war zone to the area where I am staying and living. Gospel of Jesus' name. Because I believe the, what I just quote, Proverbs 24, verse 11, rescue those being led away to death. Yeah. Friends, thousands of people in Ukraine, millions of people, daily, every day, they being, in the, in the real meaning of this word, they being led away to death. Because of missiles, because of bombs, because of drones, you never know whether you will see this person again or not. So as long as we have opportunity, yeah. we're trying to preach the gospel to every single individual about eternity, about Jesus. Of course, having something in our hand to help them with their daily needs. And the need is growing tremendously. So that's why I just want to give you thanks, just extend thanks from all of our team for your support, for you being responsive to the needs across the ocean there in Ukraine. And I just want to encourage someone to do not get tired on supporting missions because this same gospel should be preached to all nations all around the world. We're grateful to you. We just love you. I want you to know that we're keeping doing our ministry there and your prayers your support is very much appreciated. Bishop already mentioned about this book, I, but he did not say something. I want to say this, that a year ago when I was here with you sharing my testimony, how God called me to do that ministry, after the church we had a nice talk with Bishop and I shared with him many more testimonials, many more stories what God has done through our ministry. And Bishop was the first one who said, Alex, you want to write a book about all this. You want to put it down into the book and for people to know that our God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. That miracles are happening these days and miracles are for everybody. Not for some very specific people, but for everybody. And you know, I just, I never done it before, but I took his word and here is the book. I call it Go Back, 
The Power of Obedience. This book will be a, a blessing not just for you, but for your non-saved uh, relatives, friends, parents, because this book will really show them that our God is able and He is a God of miracles. It has, um, it has endorsements of bishops, of Bishop Horace and of presiding bishops. So I just encourage you to get this book. It's limited copies. And um, this is another way actually to support our ministry and my family. I love you. I'm grateful, Bishop, for this opportunity. Love you to life. Love you. Thank you. Come on, give the Lord praise for the work of God in Ukraine. Come on. Real heroes. Yeah. When, when you see on the news, uh, uh, Technology being used, drones and things like that, uh, it, it's, we're distant from it. Uh, they're living it every day. And we believe in the Lord that God would, again, intercede and allow uh, this country and others to intercede to stop the war. Not only in Ukraine, uh, the war in Gaza. We need to stop the war in Gaza. We need to stop the war in Gaza. We become immune because we say that Israel is right, but... God is, not, is God is not on the side of those that will kill thousands of children. And, and I'm not saying anything against Israel or Hamas. I'm saying this. The church has to remain godly conscious of the move of the Holy Spirit. You must understand, we don't support war. We support the Word of God. That's right, and God's will. We don't support Zionists who leave their part of the country and go into Gaza and other places and, and with guns make Palestinians leave. We don't support that. We must be nuanced in our understanding. We must support the truth. We want peace in Israel. And anybody like Hamas who's against peace, we're not for them. We're for peace. In, in fact, stand with me. Yeah about to have our offering, I know that, but we still believe in the mighty power of prayer, and if you want to, stretch your hands towards Pastor Alex. He's right there, and that nation, that situation, the one we didn't, don't read about in Kenya, where Christians are being beheaded if they don't renounce the name of Jesus, in Pakistan, where Christians are being killed, in Israel and in Gaza. We want to pray for the peace of God. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we beseech you by the word of the Lord that you would, Lord God, give us wisdom and understanding how we can be effective as saints of God to make sure that your kingdom truly comes, not only in Chicago and in this country, but around the world. We don't stand, God, for political parties. We don't even stand for economics by themselves. We stand on the word of God. Now, God, have your way. You are a protecting agent. Shield those that are doing your work. Protect them as they hazard their lives around this world to make sure that the name of Jesus is up and essential. In the name of the Lord, do a mighty work. Supply every need, physical, social, economic, God, and spiritual. Do in these lives what you intend to do and give them a great testimony. It was the Lord that did it. Now let your will be done, God. Bless them and make us a blessing to them. In Jesus' name, amen. Now give God your best praise. Give him your best praise. Come on, believe God for the work of the kingdom around the world. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Yeah, it's offering time at AFC. It's offering time. It's giving time. Again, you can give as the Lord has blessed you. If you need an envelope, just simply raise your hand and God, they will bless you. Uh, in the name of the Lord, we continue to support missions. Uh, in your uh, information on the website, we didn't mention uh, World Vision, uh, Run for Water, Walk for Water. We want you to begin to sign up for May. That's a part of your giving. Just put on there World Vision, uh, Clean Water, whatever you're going to do, uh, as we do it in the name of Jesus. I hope you understand that we must build God's kingdom every day of the week and every week of the year, uh, not only in Chicago, but around the world. We endeavor to do that. 
by the grace of God, as we support domestic uh, missions, as we support scholarships, as we support all the things uh, that the Lord has given to our hands to do. I need you to be generous in your giving. Say generous. God loves a hilarious, generous giver uh, in the name of the Lord. Those of you who are watching my way, again, of technology, I hope that you'll commit yourself to what we're doing. As we give, we are blessing those we may never see them physically. We will see them in glory. Again, we praise the Lord for uh, our young people who are going to minister during this time. All right. Y'all ready? Yeah. I didn't hear that. Are y'all ready? Yeah. Oh, I thought so. <laughs> Come forward, servers. <laughs> They're ready. I want to get them ready in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Father, in the name of the Lord, we thank you for what you're about to do. And even as you use us as your vessels of honor, God, to give to the kingdom of the Lord, we thank you for the privilege of interacting and impacting lives around this globe, but we do it all with love in the name of Jesus. Anoint those that we may never see, but we are called, O oh God, to come alongside to be Paracletus. Help us to reach out to them and every need that they may have in the name of the Lord. Bless those that want to give and have not the means to give. But for all of us, we understand the blessing of giving. We give you glory, honor, and praise because you alone are worthy. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Give God praise. Welcome our young people as you give in Jesus' name. All right, y'all. Let, let me hear you make some Holy Ghost crazy noise right now.
King of glory, coming on the clouds with fire, the whole earth shakes, the whole earth shakes, I see his love and mercy, washing The people sing Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. Let's give the Lord praise this morning for an outstanding job from our youth ministry. Come on, we can do better than that. We have just a little bit more sound, please, brothers. Amen. We honor the Lord today. We honor his presence in this place. We are so grateful unto the Lord. And if you would help me celebrate uh, our pastor, amen, our spiritual father. God bless you, Bishop. Also, Sister Smith, amen. God bless you, Sister Smith. And I honor the Lord today for uh, my wife, Sister Linda. God bless you, sweetheart. Amen. We honor Jesus today. I want us to dive right into the word of the Lord today. The Lord's presence is here. And I believe that God has a word for us today. And it's for those that have their hearts ready, prepared, synced to hear from the Lord today. And that no matter where you are today, I want you to know that God, his presence is here for you today. And he is a God that can do all things, that there is nothing that is impossible for him. Any believers today? My assignment today, this morning, is not to so much speak to the occasion of today, but to speak to the urgency of the times. 
God has a word for us because we are living in desperate times, brothers and sisters. We need a word from the Lord, and I believe that God wants to speak to his people today that are desperate for him. If you would, if you have your Bibles, electronic devices, however you engage the word of the Lord today, if you would join me in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 21, we'll begin reading at verse number 5. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 21, beginning at verse number 5. And I will be reading in the New International Version. Here begins the reading of God's Word. Say to the daughters of Zion, See or behold, your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, a fold, a fold of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the coat and placed their cloaks on them, and Jesus sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut down tree branches and spread them upon the road. The crowd went before him, and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? The crowd answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. For a few moments of your time, I would like to just simply preach from this theme, simply, Hosanna. I need you to say that with me, but before you say that, I want you to say it from the depths of your heart. I don't want you to say it just simply because it's the right thing to say today because it's the occasion. I want you to say it because Hosanna has significant meaning. We're going to talk about that today. So are you ready to say it with me? I want you to cry it out with me. Say Hosanna. Hosanna. One more time. Hosanna. Hallelujah. You may take your seats in the Lord's church today. This particular passage of scripture that we have read today is important because all four of the gospel writers records this narrative. They record this celebration that takes place and that it takes place during the season called Passover. Passover in Jerusalem is a significant time. It is one of the busiest times of the year for the city of Jerusalem. It is what some writers said that it's significant because uh, it is a bringing together from a Jewish saying that this year in Jerusalem or next year in Jerusalem, there was an expectation for this particular time and this particular season. Josephus, who was a historian during that time, said that the city of Jerusalem swelled from 250,000 people on a normal basis to over 2 million people journeyed from as, as close as 15 miles away to several thousand miles away to be here at Passover. 
It was a time for uniting and celebrating with family. It's a special occasion. You know how family gatherings are. There is anticipation to retelling the stories, the things that connect us together as family. We look forward to family reunions, at least some of us do. Because everybody's got one of those uncles, one of those aunts that are what I call ERG, extra grace required. <laughs> but we look forward to those times. And the same thing event happens here. However, during this time, they were celebrating the Passover, but they were celebrating the event. And not the Passover lamb. They were celebrating the event, the occasion, but they didn't even recognize that the Lamb of God was in their presence and they missed him. We have to be careful that we don't get caught up in celebrating events and miss the Jesus that we celebrate. I appreciate today. I long for today. I, I appreciate this time of reflection, but I must tell you that, that, that it is Jesus that brings us together. It must be Jesus that must be our focus. It must be Jesus above everything. It doesn't matter what song we sing. It doesn't matter who's preaching. As long as Jesus is in the midst, I'll take it any day of the week. I'm afraid, brothers and sisters, that we have allowed culture to deprive us of the name of Jesus. We will sing about anything. We'll talk about faith, which we need to talk about. And I don't want to get into the whole issue of theology, but we can even talk about God the Father. But there is only one name that is given among men where my, we must be saved and the name of Jesus. It is at the name of Jesus that every knee will bow. It is at the name of Jesus that every tongue shall confess. It is at the name of Jesus that we must exalt during this time. Anything else must fail. I come to exalt the name of Jesus. I come to bow down before the name of Jesus. I come to glorify the name of Jesus. I don't want there to be any confusion who I come to celebrate. Some of us come today to celebrate church. <laughs> it's Sunday. It's the right thing to do. Where else should you be? Because it's Sunday in church. But can I tell you something? I come here not for church. <laughs> Anybody here come for more than just church? Anybody come here for Jesus? Anybody come here because you need him? I'm, I'm jumping on ahead of myself. Anybody here know that there's a longing in your heart that if Jesus doesn't stop by, it doesn't matter. I'll walk away from a church experience feeling good, but still the same. I, I need Jesus. This, this, this particular text, brothers and sisters, is complicated to me. It's complicated because there are things happening here that should not be happening. Isn't that the way Jesus does things? He, he does things that are improper. He, he, he shows up and he disrupts. He, he shows up and he changes and manipulates to change the focus from what should be to what it needs to be. 
text is complicated because this is not the right time to be coordinating a king. This is not the time to celebrate the entrance of a king. This is Passover. And Passover is about celebrating the event of being spared from death. However, this moment, Jesus is using it as a time to show up, to show himself to be king over Israel. This, this text is complicated because not only was this the wrong time to, to, to coronate a king, but it was the wrong time because it was not the king that they expected. He didn't look like a king. He didn't have the clothes on like a king. He wasn't riding on a, on a stallion like a king. It is in fact the reason why the, crowd, the, the, the city said, who is this? It doesn't make any sense. You, you, you think he's the king? It doesn't make any sense. It, 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 it's not only the wrong time, not only the wrong person, but it's how he came into the city. You know, when kings come in to conquer, <laughs> they bring armies with them. When kings come in, they bring pillaging with them. When kings come in, they take their, their enemies and put them in chains and drag them to the city. But Jesus said, I'm the king of peace. And I'm coming a different way. What must we learn from this today? We must learn that the fact that Jesus is the kind of king that shows up unexpectedly and not any particular timing. However, his assignment is to do the things that has not been ordinarily done, but whenever Jesus shows up and changes things, it's always for the better. It's always things that what we need. It's always the things that transform lives. It's what we need. And so... What brings us to our assignment today is the word, Hosanna. Hosanna, I know that we use it simply oftentimes as a word of praise. And it is. But I want you to consider for the moment where this word comes from. It is Hebrew in that it says, actually, it's Hosanna. Hosanna is two words to put together. It is a compound word. And the compound word is to save now. Yeah, it's to save now. It, it, it demands the urgency of the moment that we need God to save us and we need to have him to save us now. Comes from Psalm 118. <laughs> In Psalm 118, the writer talks about the saving of, the sa saving of his people. And, and, and when he cries out, it, I want to make sure that I read it because it is a powerful uh, a statement of faith. It says this, in Psalms 118 and verse 25, it says, Save now, I beseech ye, O Lord. O Lord, I beseech thee, sin prosperity. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. This whole word, Hosanna, is actually a prayer. It is what some writers describe as a one-word prayer. It's a prayer of, of crying out to God. Hosanna is a prayer of, of urgency because it recognizes the spiritual times and the climate and, 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 and it demands that a radical change happen now. 
Hosanna. It's urgent. It taps into and acknowledges our deepest need. <laughs> when we pray, oftentimes what we put forward is what we think that we need. But what you really need is not more things and stuff. You don't need another car. You, you, don't, you don't need another house. You don't, you don't, you don't need, even, even if you think that you, you don't even need more money if, you, if you're using your money correctly. God has always supplied what you have need. I know that don't sound good. But the desperate need is, is, is a cry from the heart. It, the, 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 Hosanna is a dangerous prayer. It's a dangerous prayer because it challenges culture. It breaks down barriers. It breaks strongholds in unconventional ways because when you cry out Hosanna, it is the asking the Savior, it's asking Jesus to save me now. Hosanna, 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 <laughs> yes, it's, it's, the, it's the cry that this poor man cried unto the Lord, and the Lord heard him. When you cry with the deep depths of your soul, when you cry not just wanting things and stuff, but when your cry at the essence of it is that, God, I need you. I need Jesus every hour. I need you. I, I need your presence. I, I need your strength. I don't have to have any great thing. I don't have to have the best of everything. But as long as I've got Jesus, I, I've got everything that I need. I can run through troops and jump over walls because I got Jesus. I can go through sickness and experience the death of loved ones because I've got Jesus. I, I need him in the morning time. I, I need him in the afternoon time. I, I need him in the evening time. I, I need him when things are going well. I, I need him when things are going crazy. I need Jesus. Give Jesus a great praise. <laughs> I think somebody's starting to get it. Hosanna. Can you feel it? There's a stir in this place right now. There's somebody that's calling out for him because you need him. There's a stir in this place, just like it was several thousand years ago. The city missed it, but there was a raiment of people that was expecting the Savior. And because they were expecting the Savior, a rumbling started happening in the city, not of houses of land, but the cry of Hosanna, ho, ho, Hosanna, ho, Hosanna, Hosanna. I need Jesus. I, we need the Savior. We need his help. And we need it right now. Hosanna is a unifying prayer. What would happen if the church would cry out, Hosanna? across denominations, <laughs> across your theological point, across our divisions, across how you think, across how your title, and across all spectrums. What would happen if the church, I'm not just talking about this church, I'm talking about the global church, the significance of the global church crying out together, Hosanna, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. I wonder what would happen if we would cry out, Hosanna.
It's significant because for the New Testament, there's only one other time when the church comes together in a unison prayer. The next time that this time the thing happens is in Revelation. Revelation 20, 22, where the church cries, even so, come. <laughs> this, is, this, this is the prophetic utterance of the Lord that, that says to us, we need to begin to cry out, not just simply for him to come, but we need his presence to save us. Now, because all of us need saving. You could be the Pope and you need saving. You could be the Grand Poobah and you still need saving. You could be the President of the United States and you still need saving. You could be the Bishop and you still need saving. You could be the Mother of the Church and you still need saving. You could be the Deacon of the Church and you still need saving. Do I have anybody in here today that will recognize that unashamedly that I need help? I need help. I I need help. I need help. I'm not putting on any pretense. I'm, I'm not here for you anyway. I don't care what I look like to you. I don't mind allowing the tears to flow. I don't mind allowing my clothes to get wrinkled and messed up. When you know that you need him, you don't mind that your makeup runs and your, and your hairdo gets flipped up. You, you just know that I need him. I need him. I need him. I need him in the morning. I need him. 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 And I don't care what it takes to get to him. I need him. I need him. I need him. I don't care if I have to walk. I need him. I need him. I need him. I don't care if I have to crawl. I need him. 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 And I'm willing to cry out. Hosanna. 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 Church, cry out. Hosanna. This is a reflection of recognizing who he is because you're not asking just anybody to save you. You're asking for the son of David. Well, who is the son of David to you? For some in the city, he was simply a miracle worker. For some of us, he's just a miracle worker. What can he do for me? What can he buy me? What can you get me? What can he bring to me? He's just a miracle worker. For some of us, he's a prophet. He's a prophet that is inspiring teachings. He's got some great stuff. Jesus got a great repertoire on what we need to do to live our lives prosperously. But the last one is this. Do you recognize him as being king? Because when you recognize him as being king, you recognize that he has the power to transform and change your any situation that you might find yourself in. And you do, you, you honor him by spreading out your cloak and bringing down the palms because you recognize that he, the king is in the room and I need to pay honor and overage to the king of kings. So let me help you today. Who is this king? Who is this king of glory? He is the Lord, strong and mighty. Who is this king of glory? He's the Lord, mighty in battle. Who is this king of glory? <laughs> He's the Lord of hosts. He is the Lord Sabaoth, the Lord who is the commander of the armies of the Lord. That's who he is. That's, that's the king of glory. 
and his name. <laughs> we get privy. <laughs> we get privy because we know <laughs> who the son of David is. <laughs> we recognize him as being Jesus. But we're not the first ones. It reminds me of a blind man <laughs> who sat by the roadside begging. <laughs> and he heard that Jesus was passing by. And he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. The church people told him, shh, shh quiet. This is not the right time. Jesus is doing ministry. Calm down. But the more that they tried to quiet him, the more that he opened up his mouth and they cried out, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And the Bible says that Jesus stopped in his tracks. Whenever you call out in desperation for Jesus, he'll stop in his tracks. And when you get the attention of the king, anything and everything is possible. Sickness and healing can be yours. Deliverance can be yours. Because you stop the king of glory. I wonder if you're willing today to open up your mouth and cry Hosanna because you want to get the attention of the son of David. Jesus, Jesus, the king of kings. Jesus, the Lord of lords. Jesus, I'm willing to cry out Hosanna. Hosanna, 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 Hosanna. It just takes a few people to just begin to cry out, Hosanna, Hosanna. Hosanna, save us now. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. Deliver us now. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. Who's willing to cry out with me and just call out Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. Call out Hosanna for your own life. Call out Hosanna for your own children. Call out Hosanna for your own family. Call out Hosanna because you need them on your job. Call out Hosanna because you need them everywhere you go. Call out Hosanna because you need them in your body. Call them out Hosanna because you need them in your mind. Call out Hosanna because you need them in your emotion. Call out Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. Listen, we're going to do the altar call just a little bit different today. A little, a, a little bit unconventional because we're living in desperate times and we need to shake some things from tradition and protocol. We need to shake those things. And so here's what I want you to do. I want you to do. I want you to, I want you to, as you hear, as you hear in your spirit the need for God and you begin to cry out in your own spirit, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. Listen, I want the ministers to come right now. And as you hear the words of Hosanna, 
you hear that your need is for God, I want you to start moving this way. Start coming down the aisles. And as you come down the aisles, I want you to cry out, Hosanna, because you know that you need him right now. You need his deliverance right now. Come on from wherever you are right now. Come on, children of God. Those of you that are in your seats, cry out, Hosanna. As they're coming, cry out, Hosanna. Hosanna, break chains. Hosanna, bring deliverance. Hosanna, 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 Hosanna. Hallelujah. They're coming. They're coming. They're coming. <laughs> they're coming. They're coming. Where are you? They're, they're coming. Hosanna, Hosanna. Hosanna. Family's coming. Hosanna, Hosanna. Husband's coming. Hosanna, Hosanna. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. Hosanna. Wives coming. Single people coming. Married people coming. Seniors coming. Hosanna, Hosanna. Hosanna, Hosanna. Over every circumstance right now. Hosanna, Hosanna. Let there be a breaking right now in the spirit. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. Hosanna, save us now. Save us now. Rescue us now. Deliver us now. Deliver right now. Save now. Save right now. Move in this place right now. Let your glory be in this place right now. King of Jesus. King Jesus. King Jesus. King Jesus reign. King Jesus rule. King Jesus have authority in this place right now. Bring peace to chaos right now in the name of Jesus. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. Hosanna. Oh, Jesus. Hosanna, save now. Save now, save now. Every circumstance, save now. Save now, save now. Save now, save now. Save now, save now. Hallelujah. Do it, do it, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's doing a mighty work in this place right now. Hallelujah. There's a breaking right now in the spirit. Those of you who may be online right now, we're crying Hosanna over your life wherever you are. We're believing you by faith in the name of Jesus that there will be a breaking of change in your life right now. That he's there available to save you now. Hosanna. 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 Hosanna, Hosanna. Come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 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 His presence is here. The glory of the Lord is here. The glory of the King is here. Hallelujah. Hosanna, Hosanna. Save us now, God. In the highest. In the highest. We exalt him today. We exalt him today. King. We recognize him as being king today.
is dead. Do not procrastinate. Do not put it off. Do not think another time. He said, Hosanna means save us when? Say it loud. Say it with meaning. Save us now. Save us now. Save us now, Lord. Not another day. Not another minute. Not another second. We need you now. The urgent cry of a soul. He will not despise. I guarantee you that when Jesus rode into Jerusalem, he knew what was going on. He knew the need of the people. And those that criticized him said, tell these to hold their peace. Tell them to stop crying, save us now. He said, but if these would hold their peace, the very rocks would cry out, save us now. If you're one of those rocks, give the Lord praise right now. You want God to save you. Seriously, seriously, saints need to be saved. Okay, I'm going to say it again. Saints need to be saved. You need him now. The environment is right. Confused, anxious. People are just losing their minds. Save us, Lord. Save us now. Save us from ourselves. Save us from preconceived ideas. How many of you know that God's way is not our way? His thoughts are different than our thoughts. We keep on leaning to our own understanding when God is saying something completely different. 
Your family needs you to be saved. Your neighborhood needs you to know Christ. The people around the block need to see a light that lives near them. Salt for your neighborhood. I keep telling people, they say, well, the mayor is not doing enough. The mayor cannot save this city. The mayor cannot save your children. The church needs to wake up. Stop blaming the politicians. Stop blaming everybody but your own self when you have been called to the kingdom for such a time as this. We must put on the garments of righteousness and praise. I was last week in Charleston endeavoring with the other leaders and I told them leaders lead leaders lead we have been enculturized too much in the church I'm tired of this world's culture how many said well, no you need we need Jesus the, the old folk got that right they revered the name of the Lord they would cry out, if you can just say Jesus, everything will be all right. They, they had an understanding that it's in the name of the Lord. At the name of Jesus, every knee is going to bow. At the name of Jesus, every tongue will confess. He is Lord. Before we close, if you're watching by way of technology, call that number. There are prayer warriors waiting to lead you to Hosanna, the Savior. This week, as I told you before, I know you're aware of it. It's very, very important. I don't know what's happened in your life the last few days. But can I tell you something as your, as your leader? You need to focus on him. I'm going to say that again. I, I know you're saved. I'm not questioning that. But we are too distracted. Your issues are not as great as your need for God. Give the Lord praise right now. No, we need him. We yeah, you said it. I, I wasn't offended. The bishop needs him. Your mama needs him. Yeah, I'm signifying. Yeah, your, your daddy needs him. Your deacon needs him. We need him. The church, the church needs Jesus. Everybody stand with us. This week, I hope you will connect with the reason for this season in his name. Give the Lord praise for our speaker today. Great job. Yeah. yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. <laughs> Woo. His presence is here. Uh, do, you, do you feel his presence? So, so don't don't be anxious. Don't rush it. Don't worry about the NAAC. No, no NCAA. I'm gonna say NAACP. Yeah, what is that? Ma March Madness. You better have some madness. It better be about Jesus. That's, yeah, those women are playing. Those men are playing. But, but we need Jesus. We, we need salvation. Huh? We, better, we better be Bartimaeus. Jesus! Son of David! Have mercy on me. <laughs> and the more they shushed him, the more he cried, Jesus! Thou son of David. I was in a meeting two weeks ago. I, I'm going to start preaching that text. We have lost the Jewishness of our salvation. I'm going to say that again. Oh, don't worry. I'm coming down your way. We have lost the fact that Jesus was a Jew. We, we have become Europeanized even in our gospel. We, we have become... Europeanized in our gospel and the gospel is not from Europe the gospel is from a Jew whose name is Jesus who is the son of David we need to we, yeah we need to refocus on Jesus the son of David yeah he's the son of David he's the son of David not the son of the Pope son of David and when you get the roots right you'll get the fruit right Okay, okay. I, I, when you get the root right, you'll get the fruit right. Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. When God made a choice, he made the right choice. I, I'm going to say this, I'm going to close. I told my men all the time, I would have killed David many times. I would have killed him. I would have wiped David out. But the Lord said, I, but I have found myself 
a man. It was his heart. We, we have too many fakers today. It was his heart. You can judge him all you want. He is to be, he paid for it. But it says, it's your heart. God's not impressed by your intelligence or your money or your cuteness. He wants your heart. You cannot fake heart. Too many of us in the Christian church, we fake it hard. You better get some heart. I'm going to let you go. The book's out there. Buy the books. You're going to... Uh, Pastor Alex, go out, go out there now. Yeah, take your... Go. Give the Lord praise for Ukraine. We're going to bless him. Don't, don't make me buy the books. I will buy them. Help him, Jesus. Is it okay to ask you to join hands? I mean, y'all, you sitting close. You may as well. Yeah. I know others will be coming a little bit later for baptism. I'm, I'm sure they will. Yeah. Tell them about what? About Rachel? Which Rachel? Oh, you mean my Rachel? She used, she used to be my Rachel. Now she's Courtney's Rachel. Yeah. yeah. When, when, I, when I came in the day and my middle daughter was in the, I always had breakfast with my family, I said, how you doing, Dr. Horton? You bad man, you pretty. Yeah, her, her, her defense of her thesis was so good, they asked no follow-up questions. You bad man, you pretty. Yeah, praise God for Courtney who supports her and her children who are with her. <laughs> and her mother who prays for her and all that. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I don't know, these girls, they kind of, I'm proud of all of them. But most of all, I want them to be saved. Don't, 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 don't get it twisted. I want my children to know the Lord Jesus with a, a real love. I want you to know him. To know him is joy unspeakable and is full of glory. To know him. Encourage others this week. As we dismiss, join us. Father, we have been blessed and highly favored by your holy presence. We don't take it for granted. We touch and agree because we understand that we are saved together. This week, help us to, Lord, depict and emulate in all that we do this unusual deep love that you taught us even as you were dying, even in the week that you walked this earth for the last time, God, you showed to us what it means to know you. Now, God, be with all of us, every family. Be with us in all that we do. Help us to turn ourselves toward you and one another. And may the grace of God and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, may he rest, may he rule, may he abide with you and your family, your children to the third and fourth generations. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. We love you. See you this week.